it all came about really a couple of years ago. I was talking with my friend, pianist Paul Orgel, and I was telling him about our upcoming renovations and expansion here. And he immediately said that if we have a state-of-the-art studio, we should have a state-of-the-art piano, meaning a full-size concert grand. And I immediately saw the good sense in that. So I brought it to the attention of the powers that be here at BPR. And with a multi-million dollar expansion going on, it wasn't a great idea to come up with a six-figure expense on a piano. But fortunately, a generous couple stepped forward who donated the funds for the purchase and were donating it in memory of their grandparents. Each of the couple had a grandmother who was a concert pianist. And so they liked the idea of donating a piano in their memory that would carry on their legacy here at Vermont Public Radio. I am lucky enough to be part of the team that is going down to Steinway to help pick out our new D, Model D, Grand Piano for Studio One. All these pianos are so incredibly different. It's because they're made from wood, because they're all handcrafted in every single minute detail. You really have to be there to try it, to hear it, to feel it, to see how it fills up a space. The team that's going is Alan Day, who's our piano technician, myself, James Stewart, who is a pianist, sort of of a bunch of different stripes, classical and jazz, and Broadway is his background. And then we have two classical pianists who are also coming, Simona Dinnerstein, who's based in New York, and Paul Orgel, who is based in Vermont. have a choice of five instruments that will be selecting one from those five. And the reason they do that is because every Steinway is a little different. The soundboard of the piano is cut from different wood. It's all spruce, but from different sources and different trees. And so therefore there's always a little bit of variation between the instruments. And so our artistic people, Paul Orgel and Simona Dinnerstein, will be evaluating the pianos artistically. I will be evaluating the pianos from the standpoint of um, the mechanics of it. I have a test that I make that shows how much sustain time there is in a particular piano, and I'll be quantifying that on each of the instruments that we try so that when you have the artistic perspective and then the mechanical perspective and we agree, then we'll make that selection. So Alan thinks we should try on this two side by side. In here? That's what he said. This is a louder, I mean this is a more louder. Well there's five Ds. Oh fun, there's five under consideration. Okay, yep. I'm really happy, I'm really happy with whatever way you want to do it. Sure. Yeah, and I heard there were three pianos. Is it just us? Or? Yeah, James is Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm more of a, a Broadway jazz style. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. But you also present that kind of music on APR. Exactly. So, so that I'm, I'm meant to be here to kind of yeah. give a sense and feel for how it feels in that regard. But It tends to be very personal and subjective, but, but primarily it's, it's, it's a sense that the piano obeys your wishes in terms of voicing, in terms of speaking. When, when you play a melody in the right hand and balance it with the left hand, can you control those differences of, of sound? Can you get the quietness? Can you get the projection of sound um, in the bass? This is a mid-range of the bass and mid-range of the treble. Can you, can you find an exciting sound? Is, is, does it feel open? Uh, th this is something pianists can experience quite easily. Does it feel somehow restrained or limited, or does it feel like it's saying something and coming out? Uh, and then there's a basic question of timbre and, and, and uh, 
you know, the, the actual sort of feeling and quality of the sound. My tendency goes toward the clearer, clearer, more, more precise sound. The actual selection process was interesting. It's a bit like selecting a car when you think about it, and there's a lot of similarities in that. Uh, we walked into the showroom where there were five pianos waiting for us, five of the model that we were looking for, the Model D. And when it was finally my turn to sit down and play them, uh, it was totally a Goldilocks moment for me. I sat down at the first one and was like, whoa, this one is way too bright. Just, it was ringing in my ears, and it was just, You'd be amazed, even though that there are these high-level pianos, how different one is from another. So the first one was extremely bright. The second one I sat down, started to play, it was so mellow. It was like it was covered, it was so dark. I sat down at the third one and started to play, and within a few seconds I was like, oh yeah, this one's just right. Pianos have, have basic differences in terms of uh, the action, the touch, the, the lightness or heaviness of, of pushing the keys down. And there's variety in tone, and there's some that are bright, and then there are others that are muted somewhat, and, and, or, uh, and then there are pianos that are different uh, register to register. One of the big things I was looking for specifically was uh, something that really sang. That's hard to quantify, but it, it's something that sounds really good with the human voice. Because we're going to have some classical music players come in that really know how to, you know, make the piano work. But we're also going to have people from Live from the Floor tour or singer-songwriters that will want to use the piano as well. So how does it? accompany the the human voice that was what i that was what i was really looking for around here i don't know if it's because of the voicing or because of the action but it feels a little heavier in the trouble so, to me I missed what you were thinking. Oh, what, what were you saying? Is this, this is actually better than anything. Yeah, it's good to have that confirmed. <laughs>
They're both yeah, wonderful yeah, instruments. I mean, both both of them are going to. There's be, no terrible choice. There's no bad choice here. They're both. They both have the kind of sound we're looking for. They both have wonderful action. The the only difference is when you get to these minute details. The first thing that you want, the first thing that you look for, is a very fine projecting treble. Mid, I mean, if I had Absolutely. no other virtue on the piano, it would be the treble, not the high, very high treble, but, but you know, middle C up, two on bibs. From my experience, that satin piano may always be not quite up to what you want. And there is that possibility. Yeah, there's a possibility. of faith to yes. Yes. It, it feels is. potential <clears throat> and then hope it's a leap. So I think we can be okay with letting go of our first, like, crush, you know, and going with a piano that sounded a lot better in here than it did in it here. It sounded so much better. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, it seemed more balanced. It seemed, it seemed more, more balanced. Even, like, I could hear it in, I could hear it in Studio One, like, yeah. filling that space really well. Cool. So... Are we all pretty much in agreement? It looks like consensus to me. So this is just to say, this is the piano that was selected, and just whoever in the organization is, that is also saying, yes, that's the one we selected, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Ari, if you want to just review, I mean, the serial number, I don't know if you have your own uh, picture or whatever. Actually, excuse me, I forgot to bring one thing. Ta-da! <laughs> I think of the Steinway as kind of a thoroughbred racehorse that you are riding. You say, okay, this horse is really fast. And then the horse has more power after that. The thing that Steinway seems to have a, a patent on is the dynamic range that it is capable of, like a, a purr of a kitten to the roar of a lion and everything in between. That name means something. So it's, it's gonna be great to have an instrument of that caliber in our space. It is absolutely a magnificent piano and it's gonna be a real beacon for VPR and for, and for Studio One.